the giant PowerPro power meter. It's finally time I had a chat about this power meter. The PowerPro power meter came on my bike, which is a 2019 giant TCR Advance Pro disc, which I purchased in December 2018. So I have had the power meter for around five months now. Now, because this power meter only comes on bikes, there's not a lot of information out there on the internet about what this power meter is, what it does, and user reviews. That's what we're gonna have a chat about today. The Power Pro has been on and off my bike for various reasons over the past five months, and the first reason was probably the biggest reason. It was dropping out in sprints. Anything over 700 watts in the big ring or the small ring dropped cadence, so zero cadence, and without cadence, you don't get power, so zero in power. Not a good thing, this has since been resolved in firmware, but that's the main reason why it came straight off the bike. It just didn't work off the shop shelf. I was lucky enough to have somebody from Giant UK reach out to me after seeing that I had the Power Pro on the bike and they asked if I had any questions or any queries about the power meter to send them an email. I had some questions and that's resulted in an email chain that's lasted still to this day, which goes back and forth. Now, from that email chain, there have been a few things resolved, which is a good thing, especially those sprints. 700 watts plus sprints now work on the unit. The lesson there being always update the firmware on Gen 1 devices. You'll likely have a much better experience once they've ironed out those first initial bugs, which can be there on the shop shelf. So there's a bit of background, a bit of history of why it's taken five months to get here, to be talking about the Power Pro power meter on my giant bike and what it's been about. So first of all, let's cover off the specs of the unit so we know what we're looking at before we jump down the rabbit hole with the DCR analyzer. Pulling up the tech specs here on the giant website and there's a few things there that I have no idea what they mean. I really don't. Uh, we'll run through them anyway. Battery life, 150 hours claimed. A lot of people are claiming a lot less than 150 hours. So buyer, owner, beware. You may not quite get 150 hours. I've had to charge mine a few times and I haven't had them on the bike long enough to have 150 hours racked up. So probably a little less than 150 hours. TBA on that one. UV test, no idea why it's got a UV test. Storage temperature, working temperature. Salt spray, I have no idea why there's a salt spray uh, claim there. Um, 1800N fatigue test, battery maybe, I don't know. 1G vibration acceleration test, no idea. The waterproofing is listed as IPX7, which is pretty standard, and it has an impact test on the drive side at the Power Pro of 100 kilograms. I have no idea what that means, which angle they've hit that at 100 kilos, whereabouts, with what, anyhow. They're the stats up on the Giant website. I have also collated this list, which makes a lot more sense. Let's get stuck into this. First up, Shimano R8000 crankset. It's based on a Shimano Altegra crankset. You do get true left-right power measurement with independent strain gauges on both sides. Battery is rechargeable. It's a lithium battery with, again, 150 hours of claimed life. Wireless transmission at plus and Bluetooth smart. Bluetooth transmits full power, so both left and right as a combined figure, not just left or not just right, which we have seen on some earlier versions of Bluetooth supported power meters. So it's a good way of doing it. Accuracy claimed plus or minus 2%. We have power measurement from zero watts to 2400 watts. That's all good. Cadence range 20 to 180 RPM. It's accelerometer based, so there's no magnets stuck on your frame. Water resistance IPX7, which we've already covered. Uh, additional weight, left 17 grams, right 27 grams. You won't feel these things on the bike. They are super light. A charge cable is via an accessory charge cable. It is a proprietary plug, comes with the bike or with the power meter. Firmware upgradable via the Giant RideLink app on iOS and Android. It has LED light sensors on the power meter both sides as battery level indicators. Charge time, two hours each side and the warranty is two years for the original owner. A few additional notes to the specifications of this power meter is that you'll only get power and cadence. There is no pedal smoothness, there is no torque effectiveness, and there is no cycling dynamics provided within the power channel. However, if you do connect via the RideLink app over Bluetooth, you do get a version of cycling dynamics and you can see a little bit of the pedal phase. It's very raw. It's not gonna be logged or recorded to your head unit. So it's there, but not quite. Okay, so we're now up to speed on the hardware and the specifications of this unit. I have months and months of rides collected with this and a lot of analysis done. I've condensed it down to only three. Let's jump over to the DC Ramaker analysis tool where we can compare multiple power meters and see how things stack up. First up is the Llama lab test here. Standard Llama lab test with some steady states, some sprints, some over and unders, and some sim mode efforts. And we'll just dive into the first 15 or first 10 minutes here. You can see here it's pretty close in sim mode, but just a little tiny bit of separation with the Power Pro reading a little higher than the Tax Neo in sim mode. 
Jumping over to erg mode, things look really, really good. So I'll dive in close enough we can get a good scale on this. And you can see here that during the steady state efforts where the cadence is nice and smooth and the effort is really regulated, uh, 223 versus 222 Power Pro versus uh, Tax Neo. That's all looking really good. Into the sprints, uh, that's still looking pretty good. The Power Pro is a little higher than the Neo, probably to be expected where it's measuring power, a little bit more responsive on the cranks than further down the drive tray, but that's looking pretty good. Into the overs and unders, the very short uh, 20 second on, 20 second on efforts. You can see their responsiveness is super good. Um, everything's tracking really, really well in those erg mode efforts. Slight dropout here, hmm, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, could be environmental in the Llama Lab. And then breaking out into sim mode again, and similar to what we saw at the start, it's a bit of separation there. Now the scaling does change on this side there, so do watch for that, but there is a bit of separation there as things a little bit more varied than in erg mode. So dropping down to left right power, of exactly that section there. And we can see it is the right-hand side is reading a little high on the Power Pro. You can see there, jumping up, jumping up, even spiking through here. 50 watts, uh, 59 watts on the Neo, 78 watts on the right-hand side. Hmm. Uh, and then another steady state section, and another uh, sim mode. Again, in ERG, when the cadence is nice and uniform, things are pretty good. In sim mode, when things break out and you really have to regulate that yourself, it starts to separate with the right-hand side reading just a little bit high. Now, for this Llama lab test, I also had the Asioma Uno on. Now, the Uno was left only, and the Power Pro is left and right. However, we can drill into the left side and compare the left side with the left-right power section here. So dropping into here, showing each individual side. So ignoring, uh, well, what we're seeing here is pretty much 48.52. So I was a little off for the whole section. And that's why you can see the gap there. And in the center is what we'd expect, the Neo. So 48.52, the Neo assumes 50.50, and they both agree. And we did see they both agreed with the steady state overall power number. What I want to look at here closer is the left Uno, which is the uh, Asioma, and the left Power Pro. And they seem to agree pretty well. So you can see through here, tracking quite nicely. So my summary there from the Llama lab test, good in steady state erg, little bit off though in sim mode with that right hand side reading a little high. Now, if you're playing the long game here and you know my history with Shimano power meters with strain gauges stuck onto them, especially the right hand side, typically they read low for me indoors. This one's reading high. Uh, however, it's reading different and that is a little bit of a problem. Right after the Llama lab test, it was into my outdoor heaving side-to-side -side test where I take a bike outside and really reef on the bars with big angles on the cranks and pedals to try and separate those two power meters because some power meters will read only in this direction and not in all the other directions. This held up pretty well. I have seen power meters separate by 150 watts between each other on the same crank and the same pedal. But from here, that's looking pretty good for these very slow sort of cadence uh, efforts. So we're looking at uh, 569 versus 553 for that short that 20 seconds or so. But that's looking pretty good. No major separations there. So the strain gauges with different angles appear to be okay. And finally, taking things down the rabbit hole to my outdoor ride. And this is very indicative of what happened across a number of outdoor rides. So this is why I'm condensing it down into just one here. So. What was this, around an hour 15 outside, and we can pretty much pick anywhere within this file and we'll see differences um, between the Asioma Duo. So picking the first hill here, close, but no cigar. Now I'll try and jump in here where there's no down, down drop. Um, okay, so we have here Power Pro 300 versus Asioma Duo 294. So again, five watts there, close, probably within spec. But as I was riding along, every time I looked down at the head unit, I can guarantee the Power Pro was a little higher than the Asiomas. And what we're doing here is digging around, trying to find out why that was the case, and what was occurring. Next up was a 400 watt effort up a hill for around a minute here. Let me jump into that. So 459 versus 449, an exact 10 watt difference there. Bit of a theme with a 10 watt difference. That includes a dropout or a very low spike in power from the Power Pro through here. So again, you can see the Power Pro is consistently above. And if we drop down to the left-right, there is one standout. 
Now, if you're thinking it's the right reading high, as we saw indoors, no, flip that on its head. The left is now reading high outdoors. You can see the mix here. Now, this is raw data every second, so it's not smooth, but you can see the left is reading higher than the left on the Asiomas. The right's not too bad. So we're seeing some discrepancies there. Diving into the next section here, now this is the white swan climb if you're from Ballarat or the area. It's a nice, smooth, gradual, steady state. And you can see here there is one power meter above the other and it's by exactly 11 watts this time. Well, 10 and a half watts. So the power pro a little higher than the Asiomas. Diving into Y and we'll pick a point just sort of through here and we can see it's the left reading high. Okay. And that theme does continue throughout the whole ride. I could pretty much pick any point through here and there's a 10, 15, and at the end of the ride, up to 20 watts difference between the two power meters. So jumping into this one here, uh, 358 versus 332, you can see it really start to separate there for uh, around a minute or so outdoors. Dropping down to have a look at if there's one particular side doing its own thing and it's the left side doing its own thing there. The last section I'll look into for power left and right is right here at the end where I could tell on the two head units I was running there was a bit of a difference. So 220 versus 206, so what would we have? 14 watts off there. And when we scroll down to the left right and having a look at what's right and what's left or wrong, uh, it's the right side, which is now reading high. So this gets really complex. It comes down to cadence, pedaling style, gear you're in, terrain, However, what I'm seeing though is different numbers. And a lot of the time when I'm down these rabbit holes, it's because something is up. There's been a number of power meters that just work. We don't need to go into rabbit holes. They just, they're close enough. They're within spec, case closed. This is not one of those. And today's bonus round is single leg pedaling and seeing what values that I got from both left and right on both of those power meters when I was just pedaling with one leg either side. So I haven't done this one before, but I thought this was interesting. Diving in here to look at the left right power, I unclipped with the right foot. This was left pedal only. And you can see here, I was still getting a reading on the Power Pro right. It's only a few watts, four watts, three watts, four watts, five watts. It's not a lot. And maybe you can expect that because there is a pedal hanging off the end. But the Favero didn't record that. The Favero knows when you're not when you're not clipped in, you are not clipped in. You are, it's reading zero, so it's smart. Clipping over to the other leg, and same deal, there is still a slight reading on the Power Pro, even though I wasn't clipped in on the left side, whereas the Favero's are zero. So does that impact left-right balance? Does that impact overall power? If I'm not pedaling with that side, I'm still reading a few watts? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, we are well down the rabbit hole now, and I'm sort of nitpicking all these little chunks of what's going on, and that's usually indicative of something is up. So what could be up? Here's my theory, and it comes down to cadence. So picking the 400 watt hill that I did, and looking at the power separation there, so there was well, there was eight watts difference. And again, eight watts at 400 is not too bad. It's still not the same though. And you can see there, it is consistently above the Asiomas. If we scroll down to the cadence of both, and there's two different stories being told here. Now this is the same crank set, it's the same bike, it's the same person pedaling, and we're getting different data. And it's that jaggedness that I think is, that it is impacting the accuracy of the Power Pro. So from here, we go from 97 RPM down to 85 RPM and then back up to 95 RPM, whereas the Asiomas dropped probably one RPM. So from 97 to 85, without good consistent cadence data, it's not going to be able to compute the correct power number. That's what we're seeing. I think it's coming down to this cadence issue. And you can see here there's a cadence drop and that's where we see the power drop to next to nothing. So where the cadence is more jagged, the further the power separates. And that sort of rings true, I guess, for sim mode versus erg mode. Erg, nice and uniform. It's all pretty good. Sim mode's all over the shop. Outdoors, all over the shop. And uh, yeah, anyway, so we uh, into this section through here. Uh, what have we got? 349 versus 329. So we're 20 watts difference there. Scrolling down to the cadence, and uh, that's differently scaled as well on the sides. So the scale is a little different, but you can see the differences there in the cadence. So if within a few seconds here, I'm jumping all over the shop here, here. So we're going 74 down to 68, 
back up to 72, all within two seconds. Whereas the osteomas just record a slight increase. It's a lot smoother there. Hmm, I think that's it. That's one for the engineers though to have a look at. Okay, so my take on the Giant Power Pro Power Meter, the 2019 version that I have, kind of misses the mark. It's a good first attempt, but it's just not quite there yet. The Achilles heel of the cadence, well, first of all, the thing dropping out and not working at all off the shop floor indicates they didn't quite do their homework before putting these for sale. It has been fixed in firmware, so the sprints no longer drop out, which is a good thing, but now I'm butting heads with that jagged cadence and those power discrepancies outside and inside in sim mode, which I think is related to the cadence. Next up, they are limited to being only as good as the base that they are built on. Now, this is a Shimano crank set, and if you've been playing along at home, my experience with Shimano crank sets with strain gauges glued onto them, especially the right-hand side, hasn't been that good. In fact, I'm yet to find a Shimano crank with a strain gauge on it, right side, that I can rely on 100%. The Power Pro only broadcasting power and cadence, so no torque effectiveness, no pedal smoothness, no cycling dynamics. It's a little bit of a limiter. Other power meters in the marketplace are doing this. Whether you use them or not, it could be a way of future-proofing the device if they included these things within this offering. The question I've been asking myself is, did I get what I paid for with this power meter? It's a hard one to answer because it came on the bike. It didn't cost me an extra $1,000. It didn't cost me an extra $1,200. But then again, this isn't operating like a $1,000 power meter does. The Asioma Duos, which I've been putting up against it, are around about $1,000. It's not fully featured like those are. So it's hard to tell whether this has been good value or not. It's definitely acting like a first-gen power meter. And the firmware updates and resolutions that are coming out with those are sort of following the same life cycle as a first-gen power meter. A recent update to the Giant RideLink app indicated there's an MY20 version of the Power Pro out. So it may be that Giant are already into phase two or generation two of this power meter. Stay tuned. I've asked them about that in my email chain. Okay, I'll leave it there for today. That's been my experience to date with the Giant Power Pro power meter on my bike. Hasn't quite been smooth sailing, but fingers crossed it will get there maybe with a few future updates in that firmware. Hit subscribe. We're not finished yet. Thanks for watching.